Occasionally, the critics get it right. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Netflix original movies that critics hated. Sing it, Shaggy, please! Sing it, Shaggy! Honey came in and she caught me red-handed, creeping with a girl next door. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at Netflix original films that failed to impress the critics. While the film's overall score or rating is important, the initial hype it was met with will also be taken into account. Corny, that had an edge to it. I'm Sandy Wexler. Courtney, nice to meet you. Number 10, Naked. Is the wedding tonight? No. One drink won't kill us. After Fifty Shades of Black and two haunted house abominations, is there anyone who still looks forward to a Marlon Wayans movie? Directed by Michael Titus, who also worked on Wayans' previous films, Naked sees the potentially charismatic actor stuck in a Groundhog Day scenario, as Rob Anderson continuously wakes up naked in an elevator on his wedding day. Sitting at a resounding zero on Rotten Tomatoes, critics lambasted Naked for the derivative premise and playing it safe despite the lowbrow concept. Netflix might have predicted a poor reception, as Naked was barely marketed. I'm sorry, but I didn't hear what you said. I'm just trying not to look at your junk. Okay, I need a room key. Thank you. Please. Number nine, The Open House. How long did you say we're gonna be here for? I don't know, Logan. But you said that I'd be back before graduation. After a family tragedy, a mother and son move into her sister's vacant vacation house, but before long, weird things start to freak them out. With such an original premise, the open house aimed to deliver a similar thrill to something like The Strangers. While Dylan Minnette and Piercy Dalton deliver solid central performances, Netflix's haunted house horror film failed to impress critics. A slow burner, the open house ended up being tedious rather than intense and struggled to differentiate itself from older and better films. The quiet out here can get real loud. Bye-bye now. Number eight, Brain on Fire. Real people actually died from this, and I think I can maybe get someone prosecuted. I want to help people. Based on Susanna Cahalan's mental illness memoir, Brain on Fire stars Chloe Grace Moretz as the 21-year-old reporter whose life descends into psychosis due to an undiagnosable disease. Directed by Gerard Barrett, Cahalan's story works better on the page than the screen, with Netflix's medical drama averaging a 5 out of 10 rating on Rotten Tomatoes. We're gonna get to the bottom of this, and we're gonna get through it together. Even if far from the worst thing ever, Brain on Fire garnered criticism for weak characterization, a rushed ending, and a lack of intrigue. Rather than a fascinating look into a woman's battle with her own body, Brain on Fire is more of a house episode minus Hugh Laurie. I can't do this anymore! What the hell? Number 7. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny. He roars, but I feel a gentle soul may sleep within. 16 years after the fact, Netflix's maligned sequel feels more like a poor man's copy of Ang Lee's Oscar-winning martial arts film rather than a natural progression. Michelle Yeoh is joined by an entirely new cast, as bad people are once again after the green destiny sword. Lacking Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon's emotional weight, Yun Wu Ping's sequel seems happy to jump from one set piece to the next without challenging the cast's motives. Sword of Destiny's fight scenes are dragged down by computer animation, and the decision to shoot in English instead of Mandarin hurt the film's authenticity. Is it as powerful as they say? In the right hand. Number six, the do-over. Max, why are you doing this? So you could start from scratch, get a brand new life. Adam Sandler is back and on vacation in Puerto Rico. The second in a string of Netflix exclusives, the do-over sees Sandler's arrogant Max and David Spade's depressed Charlie faking their own deaths to start a new life in paradise. Clocking in at nearly two hours, the movie holds no surprises for anyone familiar with Sandler's recent output. Hope you're proud of yourself, killing that tiny elephant and putting his tusk in your nose. Real tough. Detested nearly across the board by critics, Netflix's comedy sees the Saturday Night Live alumni close to their absolute worst. Packed with sexist overtones and R-rated but humorless gags, the do-over has Sandler repeating the same mistakes found in his previous films. Hey dude, I'm lost! Can you tell me where the side of the road is? Ah! 
Number 5. True Memoirs of an International Assassin So people think I'm a hitman? Paul Blart Mall Cop just got a promotion. True Memoirs of an International Assassin centers around Kevin James Sam Larson, who's a bumbling middle-aged accountant and fiction writer who dreams of superstardom. In order to ramp up publicity, Sam's publisher rebrands the writer's spy thriller as a non-fiction memoir, leading to Andy Garcia hiring Kevin James to kill the president of Venezuela. Yet to receive a positive review by professional critics, True Memoir's plot goes through the motions and overstays its welcome. While not outright hated by reviewers, James' spy spoof failed to leave much of an impression. I'm sorry, who are you? Rosa Bolivar, DEA. Number 4. Bright I hate Elftown. From all the Netflix originals, David Ayer's fantastical buddy cop drama experienced the biggest dissonance between viewers and critics. Set in an alternate reality where humans live alongside orcs, elves, and fairies, Bright sees Will Smith and Joel Edgerton coming together to protect a young female elf. Ambitious but flawed, professionals criticized Bright for failing to adequately blend its mishmash of genres and for the story's shallow social commentary. As Netflix already confirmed that David Ayer is working on a sequel, Bright's critical reception barely seems to have made a difference. I ain't gonna tell you two times. Let's go. Number 3. The Cloverfield Paradox This experiment could unleash chaos. In a move that's equal parts inspired and idiotic, Netflix announced the next addition to the Cloverfield saga on the film's release date. Following two highly rated entries in the series, the Cloverfield Paradox holds more in common with Alien than the original found footage horror film or 2016's claustrophobic sequel. Set in deep space and featuring a great cast, the Cloverfield Paradox's twists failed to surprise critics, resulting in mostly negative reviews for Netflix's thriller. Only loosely connected to the first film, Paradox stuck too close to genre conventions to really stand out. The Overload did it. None of us believed it was real, but this is the paradox. Excuse me? Number 2. Death Note Rick, what exactly can I do uh, with this Death Note? Previous knowledge of the source material is not required and only serves to worsen the experience of this flick. Based on Tsugumi Oba's manga and Madhouse's anime, Netflix's Death Note switches the setting from Japan to America and dumbs down the original. Once again, Light finds a mystical notebook that grants the power to kill anyone by scribbling their name inside. I decide who dies, you obey me, those are the rules. Squandering a fantastic turn by Willem Dafoe, Death Note was largely greeted with a shrug by critics, who questioned the film's tonal shifts and unfocused presentation. Averaging a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, the film had the potential to be something special, but fell so short. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. You are a better man, Bill. Life world owes you something so much better. But you live a pretty good life. I love you, Abs. I love you, Sam. I've loved you since I the beginning. I've loved you since the beginning. This is Frank Bonneville, live from Keto. Okay, good. But I think we need more information because I'm pretty sure sand isn't a big problem in, in Ecuador. Number one. The Ridiculous Six. The Ridiculous Six the yeah! Leave it to Adam Sandler to burst Netflix's bubble. Released during a time that the streaming service was mostly known for high quality series and documentaries, The Ridiculous Six is a culmination of Sandler's worst tendencies. Lasting a heartbreaking two hours, Netflix's Western spoof received nothing but terrible reviews and marks arguably the lowest point in the company's short history. I was just trying to knock him out. Labeled lazy, boring, and just plain offensive, critics could not seem to find a single positive compliment to throw in even the general direction of the film. As Netflix's first feature-length comedy, this train wreck set the bar painfully low. Well, we're unstoppable there. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.